Hello, I'm Adi Bahnoor. Robots are common in manufacturing industries, but today they're very much part of many workplaces. The future is even more promising for this technology wonder. Welcome to University Technology Malaysia. University Technology Malaysia, UTM, is well known for their expertise in Robotics! UTM produces robots in many shapes and sizes depending on needs. UTM is also known for championing many robot competitions such as the Robocon at the international level. These robots are already being used in our airspace, land and water. Airspace? A drone is a flying robot that can be remotely controlled or fly autonomously by using software. UTM has built drones as solutions, particularly for security and surveillance. Let's take a closer look. Oh, there it is! Dr. Nazri and Dr. Adib from the Faculty of Engineering, UTM. So, gentlemen, what's so unique about this drone? All our drones here is uh, autonomous drones. Every single drone comes together with their own applications. Okay, so one drone will do a specific service or application to the operator. Right, so what does it do actually, drones? Okay. So, drones serve a very wide range of application as far as smart farming, patrolling and surveillance, uh, rescue, disaster, uh, data collections, and then geo-information and mapping, photography. So, it serves a very wide range of application. Right. Um, I heard that UTM invented this special drone called the Jaga drone. Can you tell me more about it? Yes, of course. The Jaga drone are invented by UTM to assist uh, the security guarding operations. It consists of uh, two main features. Uh, the first one is uh, it will uh, actually respond to the emergency uh, or panic button call which is triggered by this handheld device. And actually this handheld device is a uh, part of our uh, product uh, features which is uh, Guard Expert Pro an IoT-based security patrolling management system. And uh, for example, i give you an example. Uh, in case of any emergency, like the guard being attacked or uh, there's an accident happen, security guard on field can actually press uh, the panic button on this handheld. And then a Jaga drone will come to that particular location uh, to give uh, the first response to that emergency call before uh, the enforcement can be sent by the HQ. The second features of this Jaga drone, it responds and help for the uh, parameter surveillance, especially this is for border patrolling. Right. So who will benefit from this technological device? So I can say every one of us. Okay, so in general, public people will get a benefit from the drones in terms of securities. Authorities, for example, will use drones for patrolling and surveillance. And then companies and the private sector will use that in their uh, business and uh, operation. And last but not least, this is something that I would like to emphasize, mm -hmm. the application of drones in STEM education. The next generation drone will be powered by artificial intelligence and machine learning. So as we know, the environment is changing. Okay, so now the drone will be equipped with a sensors 
that not only help them to fly but also learn the changing environment. For example, the tree and then the human activities and the drone itself will adapt with the environments and the existing or the current situation. Well, until the next flying drone, let's get to know Machi Kia, a hospitality robot. Bye-bye, Jaga Drone. Hai, makanan Anda telah sampai. Sila ambil dulang yang disediakan. Terima kasih. Hello, your food is here. Please take your tray and have a nice day. 您好,您的食品到了,请您从... Wow! From air to land, meet MCK19 or Matchikia. Amazing! And please welcome its inventor, Dr. Yong. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Yong. Hello, How are you? I'm good. I'm so impressed with Machi Kia. And I was made to understand that she was invented to deliver food and medical supplies. What can you tell us more about? Yes, it indeed. or her? Well, <laughs> it depends how we call it, but okay. it's a she now because we call it Machikia. Yes. And she is actually a robot, industrial mobile robot. They've been defined to be uh, re innovate to become a food delivery robot for mm -hmm. hospital. Yes. It was happening during March when the MCO was kicked in. Uh -huh. At that time, the nurses and the doctor are overwhelmed. But again, during the hospital, we still need to send food to the patient. Yes. But we don't have enough resources. And That's frontliner right. are actually very, very overwhelmed. They don't have PPE yeah. and all sorts. So we think that we can do something about it. That's why we actually actually create this uh, machikia so that we can actually help to send food to the patient so we can help the frontliner a little bit to reduce the task. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. How do these robots work by the way? Well, I mean, uh, this robot was built in by DF Automation. It's a spin-off company from UTM. Mm -hmm. And this robot has all the basic necessary of a robot. It has a motor, it has a sensor, it has a battery. Of course, it's had a brain AI to let this robot run, to move around from one place to another automatically. Um, okay, um, do you think that robots will replace humans? <laughs> well, that's a very common question to be asked, but I mean, looking into back this uh, pandemic, actually the robot is not really replacing, it's actually complement to human. That's I mean, there's right. a lot of stuff that is dangerous, it's repetitive, mm -hmm. it's boring. This is where the robot are very, very useful. And uh, we really need a lot of robot for a lot of tasks. Especially for this COVID-19, actually we need a robot to help us so that, I mean, we can actually try to reduce the infection to uh, people. That's true. Do you only have Machi Kia or do you have some butt cheeks and uh, Ato? <laughs> do you have other robots? Yeah, well, uh, DF Automation started back in 2012. Our main intention is to have a robot for industry. So basically, in a big manufacturing, sometimes they hire up to a couple of uh, hundred of people to just to pull a trolley. Mm -hmm. So we use a robot to do the delivery, sometimes up to uh, 500 kg. And uh, I mean, during this uh, pandemic, actually, this uh, opened a new opportunity for us. And the minister actually asked if we can do something for the hospital. That's why we start with the healthcare delivery robot. Yeah. And moving forward, actually, right now, we have also have a Park Sale, which is ah. a spray disinfection robot. I see. Yeah. So why spray? Because uh, in a hospital, in a office, in a factory, you need to do disinfection very frequently. And they still use a very labor uh, people to do the job. So actually, we use a robot. So this is the second product, then the third one we also have a UV disinfection robot. Oh. So also for the purpose of uh, disinfection. And beside the healthcare robot also we do all kind of uh, different application. For example, we do robot to deliver food in sushi restaurant. Mm. So we are in a few uh, sushi restaurants in Malaysia. Yeah. Wow. So I understand that you're still lecturing in UTM and alumni of UTM. What is your advice to inspire people to learn of, about all these robotics in UTM? Well, I mean, to be honest, when I was young, I loved robotics, but uh, I never thought that, I mean, we can make robots. During that, I just, I mean, I like to watch robot cup transform all kind of oh, stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. So then I did my um, 
my bachelor in UTM. I'm very fortunate I took mechatronic. Mm. This is where I start to understand more about industrial robot and whatnot. So I did my master, then eventually I became a lecturer. So during this period of time when I was in university, I got a chance to uh, join a lot of robot contests and I represent, I mean myself and my team represent Malaysia to other countries and we start to see a lot more other stuff. Right. I mean robot is not just for manufacturing but there's a lot of other kind of robotics. But back in Malaysia, we, we kind of like doesn't have so much of this kind of robotic company so that trigger myself and my student to actually try to build this company. So right now we have about 60 staff. Actually majority of the staff in wow. Gear to Malaysia are actually from uh, UTM. So my advice to the, you know, to the student, um, I mean, if you want to do robot, just do it. I mean, right now the technology is there, available easily. Yes. You can buy a lot of components at a very affordable rate. And of course, I mean, if you want, you can just come to DF to do an internship. You can know how we build robot. Yes. Who knows? <laughs> you may join us or maybe you can open another robotic company in the near future. Definitely. Very inspirational. Thank you very much, Dr. Yong. I'm so, so inspired by you. All the best to you and your team. Now it's very fascinating to get to know Machi Kia, Machi Saleh and all these robots. But do you have robots that do things underwater? Hmm? From air to land and now water. Yes, robots are also needed in the water. They can be used for cleaning, collecting water samples in hazardous and cluttered environments such as during floods or when monitoring ocean pollution. Let's hear it from the aquatic robot expert, Dr. Atif. Hi, Adiba. Hello. Hello. Dr. Atif is from Faculty of Engineering as well as he's the director of Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, UTM. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay, I've heard about ROV. Yeah. What is ROV? Uh, ROV stands for Remotely Operated Vehicle. Mm. And we use this Remotely Operated Vehicle underwater to use it uh, in the function that you have just explained earlier. Okay. And our main focus in our lab, we use this ROV for cleaning functions and also for inspection functions. Huh. We have developed this ROV since 2014 and uh, until now it's around six years of development. So we started with phase one until phase three until now. So hopefully we can, we can go for the commercialization activity later on. You're going to show me, right? Yeah, we're going to show you later. Let's go. Okay. Thank you. So now we want to go to inspect this robot, right? So we can yes. go forward. Uh -huh. Okay. So you can see now that robot is doing something. Mm -hmm. And we can go down a little bit. So going down, it will be going down. So we can see now. Now this uh, we are facing each other. Mm. Yeah. So we can see what the ROV Peko is doing. Okay, you can try. Mm. So like a remote control car. Right. So that's why we call remotely operated vehicle. So for example, if any emergency search and rescue operation. Yes. So then we can use um, the robot um, together with the uh, bomber, for example, uh -uh. and we can uh, uh, hopefully uh, utilize the systems uh, to do the inspection faster. So how low can this thing go? Does it need to be... Yeah, we can go at that now. I think this is around 5, uh, five meters. The span can be expanded until 100 meters to 300 meters. Oh, wow. And it can go down until 100 meters. We are now uh, talking together with WWF, uh -huh. uh, and then they would like to see how these systems can be used uh, in Kudat. Oh, uh, in Kuda, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are many turtles there, uh, yeah. so we can observe the turtles and see the corals as well. So the image that we see here, yeah. we can train some of the images, like for example turtles, and then from the numbers, uh, from the turtles' images, we can count them, and also we can identify that this is turtle type A, turtle type B. Mm -mm. This is how we use AI. Uh, so AI to do to learn the images and later on, I mean the to train and then later on you can apply it uh, to recognize some of the different turtles. Wow. Yes. What you have seen are just a few robots invented in UTM. 
the fact is that UTM has produced many other types of robots, including autonomous vehicles, factories automation, virtual robots, precision engineering, and many more. Listed in the world's top 100 best universities in engineering and technology, you can certainly gain skills in the growing fields of robotics by joining UTM and make an impact in the future. See you in UTM. Bye-bye.